Good morning YouTube and it's a chilly morning. I've got to go out to the RV and check if we're froze up. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Some of you have already seen on the previous video that we're uh, wanting to go on a little trip. Well, we have some cold days here in Ohio. But we're going to be going potentially a little bit south and a little bit warmer. Not not very far though. So we didn't want to winterize the RV quite yet. Because there's a good chance that it'll be fine once we get to our location. So I've got the furnace turned on like 40 degrees. Um, and a, a little heater running in there. But yeah, you can see what it looks like out here. and It's windy. The... Uh, temperature last night the low was 21 the high today is 31 and then uh, tonight's low is going to be in the 20s again and then tomorrow's high is going to be in the uh, 30s again so I've got to keep this thing from freezing up for just a little bit longer now I am going to start my son's truck he's got to go to work for his van um, and he's still in bed he's he does a last minute thing I used to do the same thing when I get the where I was reporting to a job every day. Let's see how his van starts here at this kind of temperature. Sounds like he had his wipers on. And he did. Damn it. I don't like when that happens. And he's got his blower motor on. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And we'll put this defroster on for him. Put it on high. All right. That should do them good. All right, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm gonna come around to uh, one of the drains that are on here. Yeah, see how this is all thawed out? That makes me think that everything should be okay here, but there's this water drain here. And that broke off because it's frozen solid. Look at that. Rot row. <laughs> That's the drain for the fresh water tank. <laughs> it is a uh, fitting that goes on there, but that's not good. <laughs> I do have the hot water tank running, but <laughs> that'll give me something to do. <clears throat> wow. All right, let's get in this RV. Ooh. You can see the windows are kind of fogged up here. Just a little bit. Ooh, the door was frozen up. Yeah, it's relatively warm in here. This little furnace, I got it on low. And it's 51 inside here. <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean everything's 51 in here, but... I can't believe I'm knocking off snow in the RV. <coughs> Boy, excuse me. <coughs> See how the water's doing. Let's turn on the pump. Well, the water pump's got a little thing going on there, but it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and put it on the hot water. Make sure the hot water tank did its job. We had that on all night long. Yeah, that's some serious hot water coming out there. I'm going to turn on the furnace furnace because... It makes me think the heater didn't run or the the furnace because this little heater that's in here which is fine let's go ahead and just sit at 65 it's fine that the little furnace ran all night um, but the problem is is it didn't put heat in here that that could be an issue because this is the only heating source for the bathroom so anyways you could see where that could be an issue Good. Run some hot water in here. Yeah, the hot water's all the way up. And everything's draining okay there. This is kind of a, a cold drain. Let's see if that uh, got affected anyhow. We'll put this down here. Turn on some water. 
didn't necessarily want that to squirt everywhere. There we go. All right. That looks okay. Looks like it's draining all right there. We're gonna run this water real quick too. The reason the water's pulsating like that is because the the shower head's not turned on all the way. All right, so nice thing is we know it's warm back here uh, because uh, the hot water tank's back there, so that's gonna heat a lot of the pipes up in that area and the pipes that run to the front. Um, I can't believe that that other thing snapped off. Gosh darn it. Yeah, it's some sort of a clamp. <laughs> that is frozen. That is so solid frozen, it's ridiculous. So at some point, the water's relatively cold hanging down there. I thought about it this morning when I was laying in bed. <laughs> get ready to get up. I thought, you know what, I didn't really protect that over there. I've got to repair this <laughs> today. Um, which isn't a big deal because this was the water uh, drain, the low point drain for the water tank. And that hard pipe that comes from the water tank, it's still hanging out. It, it's still there. Um, this was some sort of a clamp system that just clamped on a, uh, a hose connection. And what the guy did is he went and found a faucet to screw onto that. The problem is, is the outlet of the faucet is not uh, a garden hose size. Well, I always wanted to have some sort of a garden hose thing that I could screw on there and run out into the yard and drain. Because every time I drain my, my tank, which, I mean, it's been a few years now. It's not like it's a terrible inconvenience. Uh, yeah, it's always, it's always been the wrong size. But, you know, this thing's never failed me. I guess that's one good point. Uh, but this part did fail me. Well, we'll get that fixed. Well, it's a little bit later. The sun's coming up. It's still cold and windy. I said today's high is only going to be 31. And tonight's low is going to be 21. And then uh, tomorrow's high is supposed to, I don't know, maybe get into the 30. But look at all this. It's all ice. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to fix this little faucet thing. Uh, I don't think any water's coming out yet. Let's take a look. The sun is coming out on this side, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's still frozen. There's probably about 15 gallons of water. It's just stuck in there. All right, so you can see what it's talking about. It's just some sort of a, a half clam clamp. It's a clamshell clamp. Maybe that's what they call it. So it's just a couple of screws, and this should pull off the pipe. Now, if this pipe would have busted off up inside here further, that would have sucked big time because uh, that does go up to the drain to the tank. So all I've got to do here is just uh, take off these couple screws and again the water's frozen solid right there and uh, get another one of those. This is a hose repair end. That's all that is. So I have a bit of a catch-22 here. Uh, right now everything's frozen so my fresh water's staying in the tank. Now we're going to have to most likely drain all this water out for me to replace this thing because the uh, piece that's up inside the hose there, which looks like this, uh, that needs to come out so I can slide on this and then put that piece or this piece back in there uh, to be able to clamp it down and, and hold it in place so it doesn't fall off. So the problem is, is that piece isn't going to come out as it's frozen but I don't think it's frozen very far up inside that hose at all. So if I take my torch here and, and heat up that plastic like I plan on doing, uh, it might be a little bit of an issue because that's going to also thaw out the ice. And then I've got about 15 gallons of water that's going to come out <laughs> and uh, be splashing on me as I try to repair it. So let's see what happens here. Here comes the water. 
just as I suspected. Yeah, there's nothing really I can do about this, which is a real shame. So we just basically have to let the water drain out and then I can uh, put this new hose barb in. All right, so here's the right size, the correct size. It's just a little bit bigger. Uh, it's probably about a three quarter. I had a five ace there before. And uh, all I'm going to do is just warm up that pipe that is still over there dripping just a little tiny bit and uh, push this up inside there. Now to push it up inside, to make it easier on myself, I'm going to go ahead and just screw on the faucet uh, so that keeps this piece from wanting to come out. That way it, it all go on together. And then I uh, just got to put a clamp on, which they gave me this clamp. I don't know if I'm going to use it with that plastic. I don't like that there's a couple of barbs that are in there that look like that it could penetrate the plastic. This is not, these, this piece here, is not made to go on to that plastic pipe that way. But since that's the way the previous owner had it and it's been there all this time, uh, that's what I'm going to do today uh, because it's just too cold for me to do it the correct way. The correct way is probably going to require me to uh, get inside and maybe get a little bit longer piece of hose uh, to come out of that hole uh, so I can do it, again, the right way. But again, not today. We're just going to uh, fix this so we can hold water for this trip. We'll see if this will work. Again, all I got to do is just get it through <laughs> another night here of cold temperatures. <laughs> we'll be okay. All right, here, let's get some uh, heat to this thing and then uh, give it a little tightening. It is awful breezy out here. <laughs> good yeah that looks really good I still can't believe how cold it is I mean it could be colder but geez it just it just seems weird to me because this camping trip that we're going on I don't even know uh, what I'm gonna wear. Because <laughs> we usually go camping when it's short weather. Um, we have been camping when it's cold. You guys seen us camping in the winter camping little deal that we did? Hopefully, that holds on to it. Yeah, looks like it's already holding water, so that's good. Okay, so now that that's on there, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, leave this open. Uh, maybe what I'll do is, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, to tell you the truth. I'm going to leave it open. I'm just going to leave it open. We'll be fine. Uh, there'll just be no fresh water and uh, I'll make sure that I leave my other valves open those valves there the bad part is if I leave the black and gray water tanks open then the cold air can also get up inside into the tanks you know and, and follow themselves up to something else <laughs> hmm that's a that's a tough call I think what I'll do is I'll drain everything out of there and then I'll put the cap back on. And I just make sure I don't run any water. I won't have any water in those tanks whatsoever. Which I don't in the black at all. But the gray, I think there is some water there. Let's check it out. Yeah, there's some gray there. And the valves froze too. Well, we'll get all the water out and maybe that valve will become unfroze. I'll let this drain out as much as possible and then I'll 
pour some antifreeze down in there. Oh, that one's not so bad. That one came out. That one's all right. But this one is frozen. That's easy to fix. I'll put the torch to it. Let's see what happens. What do you guys think is going to happen? Put down in the comments. Say, man, I thought you were going to melt that thing. Or, I knew it was going to melt. Or, oh, you should be fine. Put that in the comments. Let's see what comes up. Now let's try it. How many of you just typed in, oh my god, the methane that comes from the black tank could have exploded. <laughs> I don't want to mess with this anymore. I'm cold. My nose is running. Now the other thing I got to be concerned about is uh, we were talking about putting the generator on the RV, you know, because we plan on boondocking one night, staying in a parking lot somewhere, and then showing up. Uh, to our final destination the next day I'm not gonna let you know that yet and then uh, we're going to uh, stay I don't know the week I guess and then on the way back we're gonna stop and possibly stay the night somewhere on the way back so what I gotta be concerned with is are we gonna have electricity do I need electricity we don't need to run the air I think the batteries are kind of gonna have enough juice in them that we can run our uh, blower motor for our furnace. I could bring the big buddy heater. That would help. I am definitely bringing my extra propane tanks because I don't know how much this furnace uses. You know, if, if we're both in there and it's running the whole time, I really don't know how much it uses. Especially if we're plugged in, it's not a big deal because we have those little portable electric heaters. So, yeah, it's, it's something to think about, that's for sure. God, I can't believe how cold it is. <laughs> Look at the wind, or at least look at the flag and what the wind's doing to it. I know you can't see the wind, not unless you have some special powers, but yeah, everything's pretty breezy today. There's some pretty good gusts going on. When I was coming back from the hardware store, the truck was getting blown around quite a bit. Woo! Yeah, this is going to be the last trip for the truck. You know, it's going to uh, be a uh, sad farewell. <laughs> Because I'm sure once we uh, put this out for sale, it, it'll go right away. I've had so many people over the last three years asking me about this truck or talking about the truck. I've never had a vehicle that people commented so much on that wasn't real loud and obnoxious and was obviously some sort of a race car. So uh, it, it's always been interesting, uh, you know. What year is that? I don't know how many times I hear that. What, what year is that? Or, Man, that thing's in really good shape. <laughs> so whenever this does go out on the uh, the block for sale, basically out in the yard, uh, I'm sure it'll disappear relatively quick. I, don't, I still don't know what uh, what we're going to ask for it. Uh, it's going to be something I'm going to research a little bit in the area. I have an idea, and I'm usually pretty darn close with my ideas of what it should sell for. Um, to give you an idea, <laughs> my stepdad had this identical truck but it was a 96 and it had 60 no i'm sorry 72,000 miles on it, it had 72,000 miles and it was a florida truck uh it was in better shape than this one even and um he asked me to sell it out of the yard here and it sold in three days for 7200 dollars three days that's all i had it out here we had four people stop and the third person come back with the money and bought it. Now, this one here is kind of worse and kind of better. It's worse as far as the body's concerned. There is some rust that's starting over the fenders. It's also worse that it has a hundred and, I don't know, some teen thousand miles, maybe 113,000 miles more than his truck had. However, it is better in a crap load of ways. In fact, you know, all the, the the parts and all the upgrades that I did on it, he didn't have any. His was bone stock, 100%. So, yeah, that's going to be a tough call. All right, let me get back to work so I can get warm here. 